Hello there, welcome to another MG Creative Screencast. My name is Michael Gravel and I'll be guiding you through basic content editing with the Perch Content Management System. Now, this is a video that's going to show you how to edit basic content on your site. It's not the video for adding and editing blog posts. That's a separate thing. They are very similar and watching both won't hurt you, but um, this one concentrates on editing basic content on the website. So when you set down to actually edit your website, it's a good idea, open a, a new browser window and open two tabs. In one tab, you wanna have your actual website. So that's yourwebsite.com or .ca, whatever it may be. So this is your public facing website. And then in another tab, you will wanna have your perch login screen. And we're gonna log in in a second here. So the gist is you're gonna have one tab, website, another tab, editing interface, so that when you make changes, you can save them and then flip back and see your changes, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is log into Perch with the credentials that your site administrator has given to you. So you do that and you log in, get rid of that. And um, what you see here when you first land is a list of all the content that's editable on your website. Now, typically that'll, it'll be grouped by page. So you can see here, there's some, uh, there's some welcome text on the front page that can be edited. The walking page can be edited. The writing page can be edited. So if we just flip back for a second here into the actual website, you'll see that in the main navigation here, all of these different sections all have, of course, different con different, um, you know, different content in them, as you would expect. So all of these, all of this content is all editable, changeable, updatable, all of it is changeable. So let's take a look at this. So let's start with the front page, a very basic content edit. Now here we've got this text here is actually editable in the Perch Admin interface. So we're going to take a look here and see what that looks like. So let's go back to the admin interface here. We've logged in. We see here there's a home page and there's welcome text on the front page. So that is an editable region. So let's click on that. So we see here that what we have is this text that has got some, some kind of maybe slightly weird encoding marks in it, but that text mirrors what is seen right here on the front page, okay? So that means that what we can do is we can go through and change this and then save our changes and those changes will be reflected on the live website. So we've done a little bit of editing here. Now you can see that the, the word or the name Laurel Spruill is surrounded in double asterisks. So let's take a look back on the site itself. That makes text bold. Okay, so now an easy way to do that instead of actually typing out double asterisks. We can just blank these out for now so I can show you how to do this. So what you can do is you can highlight the text and then above this text box here, there are some basic text controls. Some of this is gonna look very familiar, kind of like Microsoft Word. So this, um, this B here actually makes whatever highlighted text there is, it'll make it bold. So when you do that, you can see that that adds the asterisks there and that creates the bold effect on the site itself. Okay. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to, we're going to edit this for brevity here. So Laurel Spruill is a writer and walking enthusiast in Edmonton, Alberta. We're going to eliminate that Edmonton, Alberta, just because it's a little too verbose and might be a little on the superfluous side. So we're going to leave that. And what we're gonna do is, instead of making this Laurel Spruill bold with asterisks, we're gonna make it italic, okay? So what we're gonna do is highlight this text and we're gonna go italic. And what you can see is by clicking that I on highlighted text, it has actually surrounded the text with underscores. So that makes it into a italicized text when it's on the website. So, We've, um, we've done some basic edits here. So let's take a look at this, this bio and info thing here. Now there's some crazy brackets and stuff here that, um, that looks like a bunch of code almost. Um, now what you can see here when we flip back to the actual website is that this bio and info is actually a link to the about page. 
Okay, so if we go back to our content editing screen here, we can see that the bio and info, that's our text, and then this is the location of the link. So let's just get rid of that and see if we can create that on our own. So what we want to do here is go, just type out the text, bio and info, and then we want to highlight it, and then we're going to create it as a link. Now, when you do this, you can create a link that's a link to an external website, like a whole other website, or you can create a link that is what we call an internal link. And to do that, you do forward slash, and then the address of the uh, page that you want to reference. So we go like this. We can also give our link a title if we want. And uh, let's just call this about page. So that's the, um, the little pop-up text that usually comes up when you hover over a link with your mouse. So we can see here that we didn't actually insert any of this these square brackets or these round brackets or the, all any, the quotes, any of that kind of stuff. All we did was type in the text we wanted and hit that link button right here and that created our link for us. So now it's very important when you're changing stuff, it doesn't happen. Nothing happens on the live website until you go down here and you click save changes. So we're going to do that. Okay, so that content has been changed on the site itself. So this is what it was before. Now you have to reload the page to actually see the changes. So we can see here that text used to be bold. It is now italicized and the bio and info link is still intact. We did it ourselves. So this is a nice brief little welcome to the website here. And that's a, a basic content edit in Perch. Okay, now let's go back and do something just a slightly a touch more complex. So let's, we're going to edit the walking page. So let's take a look over on the site itself. Let's go to walking. You can see here, this is just some basic text that's, um, that's been added by the author. So we're going to go back over here into perch and we're going to edit that. So you can see here that um, the text is, is, is very basic. Now, in between paragraphs, there is a blank line. That's very important. That blank line has to be there so that the content management system knows that you want to create a paragraph. If you don't leave that line blank, you will get one block of text, which on the web isn't all that great. It's not good for readability on the web. And you can see here, we've got some subheadings here. This is what you would call a third level heading. And this was created quite easily. Let's just take that out. And this was created quite easily by highlighting the text going, hovering over the H and saying it's a H3, a third level heading. And that creates the little subheading on the site itself like this. Okay. All of these things depend on how your site was designed and styled. So different things, formatting text in different ways may produce different results depending on the design itself. Okay. So we can go in here and we can uh, straight up edit some text. Let's remove this final sentence. Um, let's remove this sentence. Let's take this paragraph. We're going to cut that and we're going to paste it up in here. And we're going to that's probably about all the editing we're going to do. Maybe, why don't we add a photo right here? So after this paragraph right here that we've moved around, we want to put in a photo, an image there. So to do that, we go over here, we place our cursor where we want the image to go. It's very important to leave a space, a blank line above and below an image. An ideal place for an image is between blocks of text. That is ideally where you want to place one. So we've got our cursor that is placed in between this final paragraph and this next heading. That's where we want to put our image. So we go up here and we click on this image and this will allow us to upload an image from our 
uh, local computer. So if we go in and um, just pick a random image here, let's just uh, choose something for an example. We can choose an image that this is an image that's on our computer. We're choosing it. It's telling us there's our image, image title. That's going to be depending on the design of your site that may show up as a little caption below the image itself. Just depends on how your site was built. But let's call this a new photo. And we can go upload and boom. Right where we had our cursor, our content management system has included a bunch of kind of specially coded text. So this is the title that we entered there. And this is the, uh, the path within our website to that image. Okay, so that's... So we, we've done some, we've moved around some text, we've cut and pasted, we've, um, we've added an image here. Let's add a link. So let's take this text here and let's make that text link to some other website. So we've highlighted it, let's hit the link and let's make that go to our friend google.com hit OK. You can add an optional title. And uh, that is, of course, totally optional. So you can see here that it has created that link special code for us. So we don't have to know any of this stuff. Like we don't have to remember to put brackets around stuff that we want to link and crazy things like that. We just have to remember that most of the basic content editing that we need to do is right up top here. Okay, so that's that's our post. So before we post it, let's go and see what this page looks like right now. So you can see here, this is as it, as it is, nothing has changed. We've made changes in there, but we haven't, we haven't clicked on the save changes button. So let's go do that now. So we click on that perch tells us content successfully updated. Now we go back to our page. It's still not changed because we have to reload our page. So you can see here that all of these little changes we've made, there's our link that we made, and here's our image that we added, and all of our little edits, like removing that last paragraph and moving it around, those have all taken place. So the thing to remember is always save your changes, because if you change something and don't save it, and let's say you close this window, or close that tab, you're gonna lose all of that work that you did. So it's really important, even if you're not fully done and you just wanna see how something looks on the site, it's okay to save changes and then go reload the page on the website so you can see what it looks like. It's okay to do that. You're not losing anything. In fact, you are gaining by doing that. You're saving your work as you go, okay? So that was a little more involved um, edit. And again, the, the regions of, or the, um, the editable regions on your site will vary. It all depends on how it was built, what was created as an editable content area. But any kind of editable content is gonna be the first thing you see when you log in. It's gonna be your list of editable regions in your site. So that's a basic content update with Perch. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around for more and uh, we will talk to you soon. Thanks.